Savvy crap to all my fellow carpenters out there. In this Creative Thoughts series, I'm going to build a Raisin River cast kitchen table. And in this first episode, it's shopping time. I'm in my way to a friend hood factory to buy a timber slab. Once home, I will prepare it for the mold. Before jumping to it, if you think I deserve, of course, Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for future videos notification. And now, with that being said, let's go shopping! I'm here to my laboratory, back from a friend hood factory, where I bought this beautiful piece of timber. I'm already in love with these uh, brown, yellow, reddish reflections. This particular essence is typical from Northern Thailand and is called Mai Nong Si. I tried to Google it, unfortunately I could not find a proper translation. Mai means hood in Thai language, no see, no clue about. Google gave me back a proper translation. I ask around, include my daughter, a Thai English teacher, but nobody could help, so it is what it is, my no see. I'm excited because this is a challenging project. I'm going to make a Raisin River cast kitchen table. The final measures should be 140 cm in length and 90 cm wide. Let's measure the table length and cut it to 150 cm, so once epoxy will be cast and cured, I will have 10 cm of spare material to cut refined edges around them to perfect 90 degrees. Because the edge that I'm using as a reference for the cut is irregular, is not a straight, I cannot have a perfect 90 degrees cut, however, at this stage of the process is not important. As already said, I will refine edges to perfect 90 degrees corners later on once the resin will be cast and cured. Right now I need simply to shorten the table to average measure. The slab is very thick, 18 cm almost. My circular saw blade can't reach that deep, so I will do the cut in three passes. I do the second pass lowering the blade.
I just turn this heavy slab and I'm doing the third cut on the other side. Again, I don't pretend to achieve a perfect straight edge at this stage of the process. Now that the slab is cut to more manageable measures, by the way, it's still really heavy, 80-90 kilograms about, let's check how flat it is. It looks like, but it is not, as I'm going to find out. The edges of the slab are lower than its center, as you can see. I'm going to mark the lowest uh, spot of the slab and I'm ready for the flattening surface process. I'm going to flatten the table with my flattening surface slab. This is a must-have tool if you are interested in resin cast furnitures generally speaking. Large, medium size in width slab as the one that I'm working with doesn't fit obvious planners. You need a professional machine capable to handle such sizes. So, unless there is a factory in your area that allows you working with its machinery, my surface flattening sled is the tool for the job. My surface flattening sled is cheap and easy to build. So, above my head, a web link to one of my past video in which I show how I built mine. Before begin the flattening process with the scrap timber strips, I screw the slab firmly in place. Okay, that the slab is really heavy, 90, may 100 kilos. However, better to be sure, better to have a firm, stable piece able to counteract route vibration force. I already found and marked the lowest point of the table, so I set my router depth and I'm going to do passes removing material. By every pass I'm going to remove no more than 3 mm of material, over and over until the mark depth is reached.
let's check now if the flattening process achieved the desired result. Perfect, spot on. One side of the table is perfectly flat as you can see. Now I'm going to turn the slab to its other side and repeat the process. Steps that I won't show you cause exactly the same as the one that I just did. Thank you very much for watching and in the next video I'm going to finish the process to prepare the table for the mold.